welcome to the Seek First CEO podcast, a community for high achieving kingdom women committed to seeking God first and keeping God first in all we do. If you believe you're called to impact the world through your gifts, then you're in the right place. Hi friend, I'm Heather, teacher turned speaker and your host of the Seek First CEO podcast. I'm passionate about helping ambitious servant hearted women find their worth in whose they are, not what they do. As a certified master neuroscience life coach, I help you connect the dots between biblical principles and brain science so you can take your thoughts captive and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't do surface, so we go deep here and we talk about the stuff underneath the surface because I want to help you get to the source of your heart set and mindset roadblocks so you can have breakthrough by aligning your heart and mind with biblical truths. If your heart's desire is to grow in your relationship with Jesus while fearlessly fulfilling your purpose and calling, then let's open up the word together and see what the Holy Spirit has to say about living your life in flow with him. Are you ready? Then get excited for today's episode. Hi friend, I am coming at you from my new office and this is actually the first podcast episode I am recording, the first solo one for you from this new office. So the sounds might be a little different because there's not much in here. It's kind of hollow, but I hope the content is good for you. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about ways to measure success in your business outside of money. I don't know about you, but as a goal-driven, big idea, God-sized dreaming girl, money is tied to business, right? And sometimes it can become the main focus and the main way that we judge whether or not we are successful. And so this actually was birthed out of a conversation I had with, I was a guest on a podcast yesterday and we talked all things abundance, prosperity, money, and success came up. In fact, I will share that episode with you guys. It's from the brand new five-star entrepreneur podcast with my friend Brooke. And I've actually had the pleasure of working with her as her coach and have had the pleasure of being on her previous podcast, which was super successful. So I encourage you, go listen to that podcast episode, but we didn't dive into what I'm sharing with you today. And so I wanted to do this episode specifically around different ways you can measure your success outside of money. Because the reality is money is part of it, right? In order to be a profitable business, not in the red, you, you have to make money. And at the same time, sometimes what we can do is we can judge our worth, our value, our success as a whole off of how much money is in our bank account. And I want to encourage you that that cannot be your only measure of success. And so here are some other things. I'm going to give you five specifically to know and to really sit with the Lord and say, Lord, am I successful at this? Do, would you say, well done, good job. And so what is success? First of all, and this really is number one. I have shared this before and I will share it until the day I die that success is obedience to the call God has given you. And because of that obedience will come things you will not be able to even imagine yourself. Sometimes those things are financial and sometimes they're not. For example, Over the last few years, the Lord has encouraged me to slow down, to learn what it means to operate from a place of rest, to operate a business from abiding in him and not striving, to put my marriage and my family and ultimately him first. And that the, my, my, what I did was not who I was. And so this whole identity issue, this whole mind shift around money and value and success, all the things. And so first and foremost, one of the measures of success that you can call yourself successful is, number one, are you being obedient to what God has asked you to do? If so, I want you to clap for yourself and say, well done. Your job is to be obedient. Success is in your action, not in the outcome. Let me say that again. Success is in your actions of being obedient to what God has asked you to do, not in the outcome. That's God's job. And can I tell you, success in this season 
If you followed my journey for a while, you know I have built six, seven, and eight figure businesses, uh, specifically most of those in network marketing, but I've also built a six figure coaching business where I'm already in right now. And of course, my heart having experienced seven and eight figures has been I've wanted to take my coaching business to seven figures, right? And I have not. I have not got there. And the Lord in that has still said, you are doing a good job. You are successful. And let me tell you, from a numbers perspective, I can get a little frustrated and say, Lord, you know, you allow me to see favor and abundance and prosperity to that degree in network marketing. Why am I not seeing that level in coaching? Do I believe that, you know, maybe that's not for me or maybe it's a seasonal thing? I don't know what it is. But the Lord has reassured me time and time again, you are making a difference. You are being obedient to what I've asked you to do. And honestly, for me, that's been to slow down, which goes against every grain and fiber of my being because I don't want to slow down. I want more. And Jesus is like, do you want more of me? Or do you want more of money or more of clients or more exposure or more whatever? Although sometimes in business, the vanity metrics that we can that we can have. And again, from a logical perspective, you do have to track some of those things in business. However, ultimately, your obedience is God's stamp of approval, successful, CEO, doing a great job, owning it, okay? So that's number one. Number two, another way to measure your level of success is your energy, your contentment, dare I say, your vibe. What vibe are you giving off? Do you actually enjoy what you're doing? Listen, there are many people making a lot of money who absolutely hate what they're doing. Ask me how I know. In my corporate job, I was making six figures and I absolutely, and I loved it at first, don't get me wrong, but I ended up despising it and hating it and I couldn't think, I, I was willing to give it all away as long as I could you know, feed my child and at the time, you know, just pay some bills. Money means nothing if you're not happy. And ask me that about my most profitable, financially profitable network marketing business. I lost passion for it. And, uh, you know, through a series of different things, the Lord was like rerouting me. And I couldn't understand, God, why did you give me this much financial success? And yet I do not like this at all. And I'm starting to lose my joy. No amount of money is worth joy. And joy comes from Jesus. And so how happy are you? How content are you? Are you at peace? Do you have fruit of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Like when you're doing God's will, that will be a measure of success. What fruit is coming from your life? So this is a reality check for you. Am I miserable? You know, am I... What's what? What vibe am I giving off? You know, what I do? I do I feel peaceful? Do I feel joyful? That is a measure of success because those things are priceless. And when you're being obedient to the call God has in your life, the fruit should be there, right? And so sometimes that's the issue: is we get our eyes focused on numbers and metrics and data, and we lose focus of God and what he's actually trying to do. All right, so number three, what are your clients saying about you? So this is a little bit off of you, but what are the people that you're working with saying about you? Listen, have you ever bought something on Amazon and you get it and you're like, this is actually junk? (laughs) Yes, I spent the money on it and I was, I thought I was getting something, but the value of this is not really that great. You can make a lot of money in business and still not serve people well. So what are your clients saying? And I encourage you, if you receive thank you messages or cards or emails, whatever that looks like for you in your business, voice messages, if you receive those from your clients, I want to encourage you to create a document that houses those. So the reality is, is you are going to have tough days that you're not going to feel like it. You're going to doubt, are you making a difference? You're going to doubt if this was what God has asked you to do. And yes, of course, God pivots us in all those ways, but I can't tell you how many times I have gone back to the document that I have. It's a running document that I copy, paste, and or in my phone, I have an album of them. I screenshot lots of messages from people. And rarely ever is it, Heather, I made a million dollars, you know, or Heather, I, I had a six 
whatever, 10K launch, you know, of course, I love to celebrate that. One of my clients, in fact, just had a 117% revenue increase. She runs a high-end wedding venue in Oklahoma. It is absolutely stunning. And she had a 117% increase in revenue after working together. Do I want to celebrate that? Absolutely. What I also know about her is that she had a lot of spiritual breakthrough and a lot of spiritual growth that resulted in that money. And so when I get messages from my clients saying something along the lines of, you know, I I feel more at peace or all, all the intangible, right? The things that we can't necessarily see. I know that that's going to help them and be a direct, there is going to be a direct reflection in their business. So what are your clients saying about you? What are your, your customers saying about you and your services? One, that is telling. And so if they're saying nothing or not good things, maybe ask them, ask them for that. In fact, one of the guest speakers in the Seek First Inner Circle is going to do a workshop. She is a copywriter by trade. And one of her signature services is that she helps gather quality testimonials from clients and helps use those in the copy. And so if you have been considering joining Seek First, that is one of the, you know, we have a guest expert every single month in the business world, and that's going to be one coming up. So you might want to get a seat for 47 bucks. You can join us. You can be with me twice a week coaching my team of amazing coaches and then just the amazing community in there. But I say that to say that testimonials are really important. And if you're not collecting them, it's probably because you're not asking. And so ask, ask what your clients feel, ask what they say, ask what they think. And then from that, be open to taking constructive criticism. Listen, for those of you who are recovering perfectionists, um, you might get a feedback that it might feel like, oh my goodness, I'm doing something wrong. So I want to encourage you when you get feedback like that, I have to remind myself, listen, this is for me to do better. And so welcoming that constructive criticism. So number three, what are your customers and or clients saying it matters and make sure you're keeping a running document of those things or an album in your phone so that you can on the hard days go back and remind yourself i'm doing quality work one i'm being obedient to the lord two i actually like what i'm doing i'm being i have peace about it even though you might not even love what you do but you might have peace about it for the season because there's been that too three my clients are saying, my customers are saying really good things. And so while I might not be making the big bucks yet, or I might not have achieved that big goal that I have yet, keyword yet, I'm going to keep going. This is the fuel that keeps me going. All right. Number four is your personal growth. Let's just talk about that for a second. Are you further along today than you were a month ago? Are you further along today than you were five months ago, a year ago? Sometimes when we're in the journey, we can forget how far we have come because so often we're focused on how far we have to go. So I wanna encourage you today, sit down and reflect on how far you have actually come. Do you have evidence of growth? Not just in your revenue, but perhaps maybe your mindset, maybe your heart set, maybe your relationships, like all these other things, which actually comes into this last tip of measuring success. But do you have personal growth, evidence of personal growth? If so, sister friend, that is success, right? We talked a little bit today in our group coaching call in Seek First about the oil. Where does the oil come from, right? You are anointed. And then we talked about anointing your house, anointing your head, anointing your family, all these other things. Um, you can catch that replay also in the, in the portal. But what we really talked about too is that to get oil, there is a pressing. You are anointed to do hard and holy things. And in that comes the pressing, and in pressing, there comes growth, right? You have to grow in those seasons and it feels uncomfortable. And so again, are you measuring your success by your personal growth? If not, reflect on that today and then thank the Lord for how far he has brought you. And last, one of the ways, probably one of the least thought of ways, but I, the Lord put on my heart, I want to share with you today is your health. And this, is, this could actually be broken up into a lot of different things, but your personal health, physically. 
listen, I went through a season, and I'm actually kind of getting out of a season of where my physical health started to decline because I stopped focusing on that. And your physical health matters. Listen, you are the most important asset to your business. And if your physical health is not there, well, what does it matter if you have a successful business? Many of you know I have I have battled an autoimmune disease. Jesus has completely healed me of that, but I was internally bleeding in places that you should not be bleeding and uh, externally also bleeding in places you should not be bleeding. And I thought I was dying. And it was from the amount of stress that I had from the most profitable business that I ever ran. Listen, it ain't, it's not worth it. It is not worth it to have financial success if your health is in jeopardy. In addition to your physical health, what about your spiritual health? What about your relationship with Jesus? What about your walk with Holy Spirit in your life? Is that good? I also can be a, I'm a walking, living testimony of, listen, no amount of success will satisfy you like a relationship with Jesus. I've often said, you may have thought you wanted my success, but what you really wanted was my Jesus. He is success. When you're walking with him, you cannot go wrong. And so what is your health like spiritually? Are you in the word? Are you talking with the Lord? Are you doing life with him? Are you doing business with him? Listen, we can get so distracted by business strategies and forget that God has a solution for every problem we face, every question. Come to me and I will tell you all the things you don't know. Sometimes in business, we want to know things and yet God's the last person we go to because we're going to hire this person or do this. And so one of the things that I teach you as a coach is to teach you how to listen to Holy Spirit. And because what Holy Spirit might tell you is different than what he might tell me and what he might tell her, you get a customized plan from him. And so having a healthy relationship with him is absolutely crucial to being successful. What about your family relationships? How about your kiddos? Man, I went through a season of complete neglect of my kids and not that they weren't clothed or fed, but like an emotional neglect. I was so focused on my business in the name of, if I do this long enough, I will be able to provide them a life that they that they will love and I'll be able to provide them things. Listen, that is a lie from the enemy. Your kids want you, not stuff from you. And I don't know, let me just tell, me, tell myself that again. My kids want me, not just stuff from me because a lot of times they just want stuff from me, right? They do, they want toys. They want food, they want, but they really want our time. They want our attention. And I have many times, and I still have to discipline myself in this area to really proactively have a healthy relationship with my children and not put work or other things ahead of them. And it goes next level to your marriage, right? What about your health with your your husband or your, your spouse, right? With what does that look like? Are you in a healthy place with them? I find a lot in the entrepreneur space, especially women's marriages are at jeopardy. And oftentimes it's because women put their business first. Women go to their business as if it's going to provide them comfort and solutions and all the things, one, that Jesus is meant to provide, but two, your partner, right? Like your, your husband is somebody that... I really believe should be part of your business. Now, again, that does not mean my husband sits down with me next to me and works in my business, but I make sure that the dialogue is a very much a us, our, we, you know, like we had a whatever kind of a launch or us, you know, all the things I use, I use those in inclusive, <laughs> uh, not to be political here, but I use those kinds of words so that my husband feels part of my business. Okay. So what is your health? with yourself, physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, what is your health? All the things. And so I hope that gives you some things to chew on, other ways to measure your success. Perhaps God is trying to tell you, my sweet child, you are successful. And so while you are waiting on something to happen in order to be successful, I want you to say it with me right now. I am successful now, here, right now, before I get the 10K month, before I get the 20K month, whatever that looks like for you, before I have the six-figure business, I am successful now because I'm being obedient to the Lord because I actually enjoy what I'm doing because I'm walking in my calling. 
because people who I'm serving are actually benefiting from it. I don't want something from them. I want something for them. Listen, I will tell you this. Recently, I have been invited to uh, a lot of network marketing opportunities. And I realized some of these people are coming out of the woodworks who haven't talked to me for three or four years. And I just was sitting with that with the Lord, like trying not to become bitter about it. So I'm like, what are they? Why are they reaching? Well, I know why they're reaching out to me, right? Um, but they want something from me. And I just think that's really important for us to remember is I want to encourage you to remember not to want something from people, particularly your clients or customers, that you really want something for them. So maybe that's just a little gut check for you. It was something for me that just really made me remember, listen, I'm called to this for a reason. And it's not because, and yes, with that, with my yes, with my obedience comes awesome, amazing things. And part of that is financial blessings, right? Part of that is peace. Part of that is joy. Part of that is health. Part of that is growing relationships with people, all those things. But it has to be rooted in wanting something for other people, not from them. Okay, that was a little plug in that I had to get out because that is something I've been processing with the Lord over the last couple of weeks. But with that being said, your growth, what kind of growth is evident in your life? If you see some, that is success. God is preparing you for the more. Psalm 23 says he's preparing a table before you in front of your enemies. You are anointed with oil. Your cup overflows. There's a process of that, right? There's some things that have to happen before you get to feast on the meal. And maybe you're in the preparation process. In, the, in that process, don't forget that you have growth. And that in and of itself is success. And then last, health. In all the areas of your life, how healthy are you? On a scale from 1 to 10, in what areas would you like help on? All right, friend. That's what I got for you today. If these, if these, this speaks to you and you're like, man, I need a mentor. I need a coach in my life. I want to invite you to join the Seek for CEO Inner Circle. It's $47 a month. Listen, I have sold programs for $5,000 and I know that the Lord is doing something amazing in this community of women. It is not just a, a program or a group. It is a movement. God is pouring out. Holy Spirit is pouring out his spirit on women in business to do business supernaturally. And if you're looking for a mentor who is walking that path and who wants to lock arms with you to do that same thing, you can join the Seek First Inner Circle for $47 a month. Here's what you get. You get weekly coaching calls from me and my team of certified coaches. You also get monthly workshops. You get one from me. You also get one from an expert, like I mentioned earlier in the episode. And then you also get other ways that we get to interact and do awesome things. You know, there's all kinds of stuff we have done. And so we would love to have you. You get a community who's ready to support you, ready to coach you, ready to mentor you, ready to disciple you so that you get the soul care that your business needs in order to flourish. Your soul matters. And when that is unhealthy, it will limit, it will stunt your growth in business. And that's the whole idea of Seek for CEO Inner Circle is that I provide you the soul care that your business needs so that when you invest in those bigger programs, the thousands of dollar programs, you are healthy and whole and you flourish because you're able to do the thing. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for calling us, for anointing us to do the assignment that you had for us before we were even born. So Lord, as we can be tempted to look at our financial status, or our metrics on social media, or whatever that might look like to really measure our level of success. God, help us to see through your heavenly lenses what success means. Success being obedient to your calling. Success being much more internal than it is a number. So Lord, I pray over the eyes and the ears that are listening to this, Father, I just pray that they see that you are in their story, you are in their business, and that you are equipping them for the things that you are equipping them for. And Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for any success we have had thus far. It is for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.